Snapchat Spectacles 3 in-depth review. All right, so I've been playing around with the Specs 3 for a couple of weeks now, and I have to say that I'm pleasantly surprised by these. There were also some nastier, more unpleasant surprises, but let's get to the intro. Hello, I'm Benjamin Butcher, he, him. I make videos about tech, and right now I'm making videos like crazy because I'm pushing to hit a thousand subscribers in the next two months. I'm also doing a giveaway. More on that below the like button. Let's begin with the concept. So if you missed my first impressions video about these, spectacles are basically just sunglasses with two cameras built in. In the past, I've seen products similar to this come to life and also die off. It's really refreshing to see a company like Snapchat bringing such an interesting and unique product to market. I've reviewed a significant number of things on this channel and it's refreshing to be able to say that I've never reviewed anything quite like this. Let's start with lenses. Firstly, the good. Lenses are tinted for 100% UVA and UVB protection. If you happen to live in the US, then you are lucky and you can get prescription lenses with your Snapchat spectacles, which is good. But that's about the only good thing I have to say about the lenses. Here's the bad stuff. These glasses have the same problem as the Bose frames. They have a use case outside of just being sunglasses. That means that sometimes I want to use them inside on a sunny day, but I also want to be able to see while I'm inside. This is where I would really love to see swappable lenses. More than that, I can't find a way to buy lenses for the Spectacles 3 outside of buying a new pair of spectacles entirely. Snapchat does have third-party options for previous models, but they don't sell lenses for the latest version of Spectacles for some reason. I spoke with a Snapchat sales rep about this, and they confirmed that I would not be able to use Spectacles 1 lenses with Spectacles 3 frames. My next question, of course, was whether or not I would be able to get replacement lenses, and he clarified it for me. Snapchat does not sell replacement lenses for Spectacles 3. Neither does their product warranty cover accidental damage. I guess Snapchat might take pity on you, but they are in no way legally obligated to do so. The long and the short of it being that if you break a lens, you're more or less screwed. Next, let's talk about what we loved about the hardware. Honestly, this has got to be one of my favorite things about the spectacle. They feel really well made. They feel sturdy. Yes, they are a bit heavy, and I will talk about that in a minute. That notwithstanding, I love the design of these. They feel chic and bold, and I also love that they feel tough. Not only that, but they did survive a couple of drops, no problem, so we know that they're as tough as they look. Going back to the weight of them and some more of the bad stuff regarding hardware, while this does prevent them from feeling cheap, it also makes them pretty much impossible to push up onto your head. Partly because you can actually feel the nose pads pushing into your skull, and also because because any sudden head movement is likely to send them flying. This also ties into their wearability. In addition to being heavy, the specs are a one-size-fits-all product, meaning that if, like me, you have a wide head, the grips at the end of the arms will eventually start to pinch the sides of your head. Eventually, it becomes so uncomfortable that you have to remove them. The max for me was about three hours. Next, let's talk about the good stuff in the interface. Honestly, I really love how easy this device is to use. Often, when a new or unusual product is brought to market, it's on the developers to make it really devastatingly simple, in the hopes that it will be more adoptable. I feel like Snap has really nailed this aspect of the product, and I know I'm speaking as a tech guy, but honestly, this product is insanely easy to use. Come to think of it, you don't even need to turn it on, you just wear the glasses and push the button when you want to record, and then you hold for a longer snapshot. It is literally that simple. Some things that I dislike about the interface is that while I love the simplicity, it actually tends to be maybe a little too simple, and I would really love to have the option at least of greater customization, specifically in a couple of ways. Firstly, I would really love to be able to add functionality to the buttons. For example, my right button would maybe allow me to capture the upcoming 10 seconds, and then the left allows for the previous 10 seconds, much like a body cam. Because this device capitalizes on our desire to capture in the moment, being able to capture the previous 10 seconds would make a lot of sense. Lastly, I would really love to be able to use these specs for unboxing videos. The quality is decent and it provides an excellent first-person perspective. Given the amount of storage available, it would be great if I could go into the settings and enable longer captures, or even start recording with the right button and stop recording with the left. Next, let's talk about battery. So the battery on these is quite impressive. I did manage to kill them a couple of times, but I also was using them very heavily. Bottom line is that you're more likely to want to take them off due to discomfort before they run out of juice. I'll also talk about the discomfort thing in a bit, but speaking of batteries, let's talk about the case. Weirdly, I think the case is the thing that made me fall in love with spectacles the most. First of all, because it uses a lot of magnets, and if you know me, you know how much magnets make me happy. Secondly, because the battery life that it adds to the spectacles is substantial. So impressive that in the nine days of heavy use, I only had to charge the case once. I also love that the case folds flat so that I can pocket it. I use that 
that feature a lot, and it's just such a pleasing design. Also, the case charges via USB-C, as it should. And while we're at it, wireless charging would be cool if, you know, they could fit it in the next model, but for now, I'll give them a pass. Next, let's talk about storage space. Okay, little story about this one. So while I was using Specs, I would regularly offload my pictures and videos onto my phone as I didn't want to fill up my spectacles. I'd been using them for about a week when I got a notification saying that my Specs were full. Obviously, that seemed kind of impossible to me, so I did a little digging, and it turns out that nothing gets deleted from your Specs unless you clear the entire device yourself, meaning that everything I had shot for the previous week was still on the device which feels like a lot. That was that was a significant amount of data. All that to say that the Spectacles have an ample amount of storage available and that even if you're halfway paying attention to it, you'll never need to worry about accidentally filling up your specs before you can offload it. Next, let's talk about camera quality and video format. First, the good. Honestly, this is something that I like the most about the Spectacles. The default video format is circular, and this means that you can twist your phone around within that circle to see more of the video. It feels really innovative and fresh and cool. I've also gotten compliments from my friends on Snapchat who think it's some kind of magic. I like that Snap offers a variety of ways to export video captured on the Spectacles. Now let's talk about the bad. The circular video format is kind of a double-edged sword. This is because that to do what it's doing, Snap has to essentially take the normal high-res video that it's capturing and then zoom it in so that we can turn our rectangular screen this way and that. Because you're zooming in to do this, it really does make the video look lower resolution than it actually is. Additionally, because of this unique format, it would appear that every time I want to view a Snap taken on my Spectacles, I need the Snapchat app to render the video. On average, that takes about 30 seconds for a 10 second video, which feels kind of clunky. Less often though, it takes a full minute. Photos load much faster. This really slows down the whole experience and it makes it a lot less desirable. To add to that, this isn't just a one-time thing. Unless you've recently loaded that snap, you'll have to do this every time you attempt to view it. Also, the spectacles did perform really terribly at night. You can kind of get a feel for how the specs don't really handle that very well at all. You get the general gist. To the extent that I just stopped trying to use them at all, I suppose I probably should have taken the fact that they're sunglasses as a hint. Next, let's talk about the 3D viewer starting with the good. This came included with my spectacles, uh, and it's just a black version of Google Cardboard. Honestly, if you can get over how finicky it is, it's kind of a cool way to relive a memory in first person. Now, the bad. Weirdly, Snapchat somehow made this worse. Unlike Google Cardboard, the 3D viewer that Snapchat sends you doesn't have a head strap, so essentially you'd need to hold it to your head and then use the one and only button to scroll forward through your snaps. If you want to go back, you need to take the entire thing apart, pull out your phone, and then make whatever adjustments you need to. Ultimately, Google Cardboard in itself was a uncomfortable, cheap, poorly designed product, and so is this. If you can avoid adding it to your purchase, I would. On this note, you could also publish your snaps to be viewed in YouTube VR. I thought that this would be better, so I tried it, and honestly, I have to say that it was dizzying, literally. I tested with other VR videos to make sure that it wasn't just my settings, and for some reason, the way that Snapchat overlays the two images makes me see double, and I feel like my eyes are crossed. It's really bad. All right, so now that you have the facts, you can decide if these are for you or not. For me, I have to say that I'm a little disappointed in how inflexible they are. I really do appreciate how simple they've made them to use, but I really wish they'd let me do more once I've got the basics down. If I could record longer video or do first-person unboxings, I would buy these in a heartbeat. But frankly, as they are, they're really just good for documentarians and maybe professional influencers. I say this with a little regret because this is without a doubt one of the coolest things that I've ever reviewed. Overall, however, it's just not worth the money to me. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I'm Benjamin Butcher, and as always, I'll be right back.